Hello and welcome to another Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I shall be making over this Skybuster model, number 24, come out in 1979. It's an F16, as you can see on the rudder there. This particular one is a little bit chipped up, uh, could do with some new decals, a bit of a clean up, and I'm thinking I would like to make this look a little bit more realistic. So this one is in the General Dynamics uh, colour scheme when they first came out. As I said, it came out in 1979. The real one came out in 1978. So Matchbox, a year later, bought this model out. I'm going to drill these rivets out with a 3.8mm drill bit. So I'll do that now. First of all, I do the front one. Followed by the rear one. Once I've done that, I remove it from the vise and separate it with some finger pressure. Like this. So the lower fuselage separates from the upper fuselage quite easily. And here you can see the canopy has fallen out and it needs a bit of a clean. These undercarriage modules, whatever you call them, you push them backwards and they come out. This one's broken, so I should just push that back into alignment and put a blob of super glue on it probably to fix that up. These undercarriage units cannot, or modules, cannot come out when the model is assembled because there's, um, there's some metal pegs that protrude out of the upper portion of the fuselage to lock them into position. So there's actually only five parts here and I'm adding another two with these M2 screws. So seven parts total. These screws are going to be used to hold this thing back together again after I've painted it. So to use those screws to put it back together I need to cut a thread into these posts in the upper fuselage. These rubber clamps on this vise are magnificent because I can grip these models with these rubber clamps on the tailplane and it doesn't damage the model at all. Now these screws are M2 screws and they are three millimeters long and I'm going to be using this two millimeter tap in this hand chuck to cut the thread so that I can put the screws into the model at the end and put it back together again. So first up I have to drill a one and a half millimeter diameter hole into these rivet posts and when I've done that I'm using this uh, hand chuck with the 2mm tap in it and I'm just cutting a screw thread in these holes and here you can see the screw threads. So now I'm using this hand chuck with a cut down allen key of the correct size to screw these M2 screws into position. I'm checking that they are going deep enough so they will sit flush with the base of the finished model and also so that when I spray the model the heads of the screws will be color matched to the color of the model. So now that I've done that the next stage is to strip all the old paint and stickers off and to do that I'm using my favorite product or one of my favorite products this poly stripper paint stripper. It's a gel type product and uh, you must be careful that you don't get any on your skin. So I'm using these forceps to hold the model and I'm spreading it onto the model with a, a disposable paintbrush basically because uh, I often throw these away after I've used them once. Usually pick them up from the $2 shop in packs of 10 so they're not too expensive. Uh, this time around I'm putting a lid on this uh, fast food container and leaving it for five minutes 
so that the fumes of the product can effectively remove the paint. If you just rely on the gel itself, it can take several attempts. I've noticed through experience that if you trap it in a maybe a sandwich bag with a Ziploc seal on it, or in this case a disposable food container, it works far more effectively. As you can see, this has been taken back to the metal. The sticker surprisingly is still on there, so I picked that off with my nail and lo and behold, for some reason there's no paint underneath it. So I guess the paint strip has penetrated the sticker or something similar. Now that I've done the, uh, the wing surfaces and lower fuselage, I'm now doing the upper fuselage and tailplane. And that is so satisfying when a big chunk comes off like that. Once again, I'm using this pink toothbrush to scrub the model in some water here to remove all the last bits and pieces of the paint. So lovely, now here we are, we're back down to the bare metal. And the next stage is to cover it with some fine surface primer. In this instance, I'm using Tamiya Light Grey which is one of my other favourite products, as it doesn't obscure any of the details on the castings. So I'll give it a quick light coat uh, in my spray booth here. Just a light dust over is all that's required. It helps to even out any imperfections or pitting on the surface, and it highlights all the details as well, and uh, provides a good base for the colour paint to adhere to. Now I've bought this new little toasty oven specifically for baking paint and speeding things up. So I don't like to leave any fingerprints on any models which has always been a, a problem of mine so I am now putting this on for 30 minutes at about 40 degrees to bake that paint on. Now whilst that's baking, here is the colour scheme that I've chosen for this model. Remember I said I wanted it to look more realistic, like a fighting machine rather than a toy? So it's called the Lizard Flanker, and this is uh, representing a Russian aircraft when the uh, United States Air Force play war games and train their pilots over the desert. They have these uh, planes painted in this uh, combat colour to represent the enemy so that the top guns have got something to home in on and pretend to shoot down to hone their skills with the missiles and bombs and bullets etc. The F-16 has a max speed of Mark 1.2 at sea level and Mark 2 at altitude and it can actually climb at 50,000 feet a minute which is insane. So this has been baking now for 30 minutes and I'm getting these out to look at them and I'm sure they're going to look magnificent. What the? Oh my god. I bet that's Kevin. <clears throat> so I've stripped them all back to the metal and repeated the process. And I've baked this in the oven again for 30 minutes and this is what it turned out like. Now you can see all the details on this casting. There's a load of panels and panel lines and hatches. There's a strange thing there that's only on the left hand side, the port side. I think maybe it's even a cannon, a cannon barrel outlet or possibly an air to air refueling probe, I'm not sure. If any of you out there have worked with the F-16, please uh, message me and let me know what that is. Now here's a picture of the upper wing. Looking down, this is the upper wing and lower fuselage. This is the underside of the upper wing and under fuselage, lower fuselage, and you can see this was made in 1978, and it's the Matchbox SB24, F16A, no less. So to paint this model, I've got three colors. The first color I'm using is this sand color and it's uh, from Mr. Hobby. And I'm going to dilute it with some thinners. 
so that it sprays nice and thin through my airbrush without clogging or spluttering. I just give my air gun a quick squirt through of some neat thinners just to make sure it's functioning. And now here I am putting on the base coat of the yellow sand coloured paint. Now remember, I'm using that camouflage pattern that I printed out as a guide. And I'm hoping this is going to look like a, a real aircraft when I've finished. More so than the red and white toy that I began with. These are fighting vehicles after all, and they should look like fighting vehicles, I reckon. They need to look aggressive and mean and camouflaged and ready to go. Now what I've done here is I've drilled a small hole in the nose of the aircraft there and I've left the drill in position and glued it in and that is representing a pitot tube off the front of the aircraft which is present on the real thing but not on the model. So I'm trying to improve this as I go to make it look a little bit more realistic now today I'm using a new product I'm going to try this out it's called liquid mask and what you do is you paint it on the areas where you don't want the paint to stick so before you spray paint the model you paint this liquid mask on then the idea is you paint the model and you peel the liquid mask off similar to a face mask you know the, the peel off face masks that females use to uh, clean out their pores and things here I'm drawing with a pencil just over the top of the sand colour here in accordance with the, my grand master plan and I've just given myself some cues as to where to paint this liquid mask. So what I'm going to be doing is painting over the yellow that I want to remain. And where it isn't painted I'm going to paint green. In the hope that when I peel it off Everything's going to look perfectly camouflaged with nice crisp edges to it. You know, old school might have used uh, loads of little bits of cut up masking tape. But I'm using a new product here, a new idea, a modern idea for a modern modeler to get the job done. So the second colour today in this colour scheme I'm using is a I go the lightest first, then the second lightest, which is this green. And the last coat's going to be the darkest, which is the dark brown, the NATO brown. So here's the masked off model. And I'm painting it with this green paint. I've got overall coverage. Now, it doesn't matter that it's going to be gloss or semi-gloss, because whatever, at the end of the day, I'm going to spray this whole model with some matte varnish just to tie everything together and level it out so it's going to look good at the end hopefully now after I've done the green I'm now leaving that mask medium on there and I'm adding some more now where I don't want the brown to be and I must admit it was very time consuming and difficult to wrap my, my, my brain around because you're kind of working in reverse, you're looking at where you don't want the colour to go. But your brain keeps saying, paint it here, and you go, no, I don't want it there, I want it there, I, want, I don't want it there. And it's, it's quite awkward, and you have to, you cannot lapse in concentration at any moment in time, because if you do, you stuff it up. Uh, anyway, so I'm confident that I've done the right thing, so I've got an undercoat of sand, a second coat of green and the top coat of brown and are all individually the the green and the brown are individually masked so I'm hoping now everything's dry and this looks like a chocolate aircraft very similar to the chocolate train I had but this genuinely looks like melted chocolate um, but here I am I'm using a toothpick just to start things off trying to lift the edge of that masking product and I'm just rolling it away with my thumb until I've got enough to grip and then I can pull it off very very similar to the facial masks if you've ever tried one of those 
you can see it's like a flexible membrane there, rubber membrane that's coming off. And it'd be nice to get it off in one piece, but you can't because it tears and breaks. But already I'm getting excited and thinking, hey, do you know what? I'm onto something here. This is looking pretty schmick, I'm thinking. And I keep going. But the thing is, the more I go, the more disillusioned I get with it. And despite my best efforts of cleaning and trimming and removing all of the masking agent, the model that I'm looking at does not look anything like the picture that I anticipated. And to tell her the truth, I'm not too happy with it. And, and there's little bits there that they're invisible. You have to keep looking at it and you find little bits that you've missed. Well, I keep going and going and going. And... Well, I have a look at that. Overall, it looks rubbish. There's bits and pieces all over it. That bit there is good, but that's about the only bit that is. That bit is really good, but the rest of it's rubbish. And I'm quite disappointed because I've spent hours on this. Remember, it's three coats of paint and two lots of masking and drying and waiting. And ugh, I, I don't need to tell you, it was, it was disheartening. So I had to go back to the drawing board and strip it back to the bare metal again. And think up something different. So I came up with this blue tack idea that I'd seen someone do online. I bought this packet and I thought there was actually some blue tack on the outside there. I thought someone had opened the packet and uh, grabbed a bit out and rolled it up in a ball and squashed it on the front there. As it was, it was just printed on there. Now the idea being is you roll up little thin sausages of this and you run it along the lines, the edges, like you would with masking tape. And then you fill the rest of it in. And then you spray it and overall I'm looking at this and I'm thinking this is turning out heaps better than the last thing I tried it's actually quite good and I think I can work with this and I've decided at this stage I've spray painted the yellow I've spray painted the green I'm going to hand paint the brown because this masking this model off with the blue tack took me over an hour and I just haven't got the time to spend on this so I'm thinking, I'm halfway there, well, two-thirds way. I'm two-thirds of the way there. I might as well just uh, bite the bullet and use the old brush. And I mean, let's face it, modelers of yesteryear, they had no other options but to use the brush. Just showing you here, it's not perfect. There's a little bit of bleed there in the corner of that angle. Uh, it's not crisp. There's a little bit of overspray around. But I'm um, quite pleased with it. I wasn't very good getting that shape right in accordance with the plan. Anyway, I painted the brown with a paintbrush and I used a leveling solution. I used this NATO brown from Tamiya. And I actually gave it three coats, one after the other. Each coat kind of blended into the previous one. And it ended up looking not too bad and I'm quite happy with it. However, I'll let you decide at the end of the video. So I'm at this stage now, I'm just adding some extra details. I'm painting the Sidewinder missiles in here white. And I've got to have grey tips. And I'm going to do a black uh, heat seeking iris on the front. Here I'm very carefully painting around the cockpit combing to highlight it in this black here. Because I saw it in a, uh, a picture of the real thing. It had like black combing around there. This was a little bit awkward. I made a bit of a mess. had to go over it. Correct the mess. Go over it again. Etc. Etc. Very time consuming. That's shown you have painted the interior of the cockpit. So when it's back together you look in through the canopy. You'll, you'll just see black in there. Here I've tried. I've attempted to make the undercarriage look a little bit more realistic by painting the wheels black and the center silver. Now here's some decals I printed out. Some in photo quality, some in plain quality. The photo ones were slightly better so I've gone with those although they're not really that good. They are a little bit bland and flat.
Oh, that one's gone, so I'm gonna have to cut another one out. These are the tiniest little decals I've ever, ever had to play around with. I don't even know why the jets have these markings on them because you can't see them unless you're standing on the wing. So it, may, it makes no sense to me why they'd even bother having them that small in the real world, but they do. And there's it's uh, that's going to go on the rudder or the tail fin, whatever you call it. Now, before I put it back together, because I've got a a high gloss uh, transparency for the canopy. I'm painting the whole model with some flat matte varnish and I'm showing you here the the glossy uh, canopy that I dipped in some floor polish self shining floor polish as I've done in the past and it come up lovely so I had to spray the model with the matte varnish before I assembled it otherwise that cockpit canopy would have been matte after I'd gone to all that effort of shining it up so now I'm reassembling it and I'm putting the undercarriage in it just drops in and slides forward and then when you put the 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 top of the fuselage on there's some uh, cast pins on there that stick down they prevent those wheels from coming out uh, the canopy just sits in there looks quite good And this fits together really easily. It's like this, the world's easiest jigsaw puzzle. And now I've just got to put two screws in. And I've got to remember to put the, the green one in the back and the multicolored one in the front. Because that's how they were when I painted it. Uh, look at that. That looks beautiful. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm putting the decals on. These are extremely fiddly. And as I said before, I don't really see the point. I'm just doing it though because I felt it needed the extra detail. Although why I bothered I don't know because no one's ever going to look at them and think, oh look at that, Marty put some extra details on there. Because they are so insignificant in the scheme of things that um, they're hardly worth bothering about. But I thought I'd go that little bit extra and try to make it look like the real thing as per my original plan that picture that I downloaded off the internet uh, I'm just absorbing the I use some uh, some decal uh, fixing solution there and it didn't really work as you, as you can see there's white edges around that decal they're like lifting off the wing and I'm thinking oh please don't make me fail at this point in time because I've gone too far now to go back so I just put some more of the solution around the edge and roll it over with the cotton bud it seems to stick as I said before the decals aren't fantastic but uh, when you're looking at this thing sitting on the table in front of you it is so small the decals actually look perfect believe it or not uh, you'll just have to take my word from that, but they never do under this high magnification of the camera. And it's always disappointing me that I can't show you what the real thing looks like. So this is what we started with. This is the original Matchbox colours that it came out in the General Dynamics colour scheme they were the company that made the F-16 though I think it was bought out by Lock Lockheed and this is what it looks like now so this is the Lizard Flanker colour scheme again i uh, remind you it's to represent an enemy aircraft when the United States Air Force do their pilot training and I think it looks pretty cool. I do like the three colours. It's got the grey nose cone also. The Sidewinder missiles. And I painted the tail, the uh, jet nozzle at the rear there silver. Just to add a little bit of bling. There I've simulated the air intake with by painting it black. And now we're going to play a game. How effective is this camouflage? Can you see the aircraft flying down the Grand Canyon? You've got 10 seconds to find it.
There it is there. Okay, we're going to go another one here. Can you see the aircraft? You've got 10 seconds. Have you found it? There it is. Blends in quite well, doesn't it? The camouflage is very effective. Here's a third one for you. Let me know if you enjoy this. There it is. How many of you got that? Not many, I bet. And here's the last one. Probably the hardest. Ah, uh, there it is. Yeah, I know some of you got it. Let me know if you enjoyed that or not. I hope you did. I'd just like to say thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you later. Oh, f***. That's not good. That's the first f*** up right there.